though, would you open up your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. For those of you that are taking notes, I want you to get this. And for those of you that are, don't have your Bible with you, you can see it up on the screens. For myself, I use the King James Version. And just for a moment here, when you get an opportunity that comes up, we'll get at it. Second Timothy chapter 3, look at verse 7. It says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now last week we, you know, I introduced this, t this topic, this subject that we're on. And I tell you this, you know, every, usually, you know, I found myself doing this long series. You know, I teach a long series once a year. Last year I think I did one for 27 weeks. On one series, I preached, ministered 27 different topics in that one subject. And so this is going to be that series of, for, th for this year. But we, we were talking about what is required for eternal or real change. What, what, there are certain things that are required for real change. There are certain things required to change, but there are certain things required for eternal change. Now, I introduced it last week to you, and you got to think about it. Every day, things are changing in your life. It makes no difference if you accept it or not. Things are changing every day. The minute you're born, you start getting old so you can go toward the other end. The very minute that you're born. The next thing that happens, the world is consistently changing. It's advancing. Notice it says, ever learning. It says, then it says, but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. There's a lot of change going on in this world. Good, some good, a lot of bad, and so a bunch of indifferent. There are even forces at work with, with trying to get you to change. And then there's forces that are trying to get you to stay the same. And see, we've got to deal with this because the reason I'm telling you is a lot of times believers, I've seen, you know, I've seen believers in various stages of their life. And a lot, a lot of believers, you, you know, have been hearing sometimes, you know, well, 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 God, well, what, what is God waiting on? You know, well, I, I'm believing God and why hadn't he done this? I was told this years ago when I was a boy, this ha they said this to me. But yet, what are you doing? See, a lot of the words that we receive, we are not ready for the moment we receive them. We have to change to get it. Amen. Salvation, you were reborn. You're, you're a new creature that never existed before. In, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He says all of that is happening, but notice you have a new spirit. You never existed before. You have a new appetite in your spirit, but yet when you open your eyes, when you've spent that glorious time of this, this change and when God re releases you, this new person, you still look at, you still got the same hands, the same feet, the same features. Then what is it? And then here's the thing. If you're not careful, you go do the same thing. But you say, well, didn't the Lord just say that I was a new creature and I have a new appetite? Yes, you, in your spirit you do. But see, there are some other stuff that needs to come along and line up. And this is what we're talking about. And here's, last week I gave a quick, you know, introduction. You need the word of God, you, you know, you need, but I'm going to give it to you. Now I'm going to dig deep and I'm going to talk to you about it. So in, stay in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look at verse 1 now. Go back to verse 1. And we're going to talk about this change in the, and what actually needs to happen. Because a lot of times, this is what I said last week and I'll, I'll preference it right now. People running out talking about their witness for God, knocking on people's doors, running into people, let, bothering people at the mall, bothering people at their houses, running into people on the street, and all of that stuff until you get to this point. See, a lot of times we talk about we're doing something for God, but is God leading us to do something? And see, we're talking about change. And when you're telling a person, do you know Jesus? You want them to change. That means that there are certain things required for them to be ready to make change. But yet you're trying to force something on them that, watch this now, that a lot of you haven't done yourself. And so let's get to this because we want to make it clear. Because Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. 
And also notice this. We are the strongest people in the earth. Ain't nobody saying nothing now. Believers have the most power. Thank you, sister. Believers have the most power, the most strength, and had God on their side, but yet why are we seemingly always being defeated? It's because, because notice, it, it requires something here, and it does require, but I said it requires the word of God. But a lot of believers don't live by the word. They talk the word, but they don't live by it. And see, I had a conversation, you know, because I talked to a lot of people in Uganda. I mean, a lot of people in Africa. I mean, all day long, my phone is typically, I'm, because, uh, you know, they're eight hours ahead. So then, you know, when it's eight, they off, they want to talk to me, and I'm trying to go to bed, and then they want to have a conversation. And don't get me wrong, some of these people need help. But the one thing that, you know, I had this one conversation with a young, with a young lady, you know, she was going back and forth, and I was talking about one subject, and all of a sudden, she started quoting scriptures. Telling me, you know, text, texting them out on the thing. I said, what are you talking about? I said, we're talking about this. Okay, then, then back again. See, what do I was saying? Then I said, see, they have this religious thing going, but they don't have this relational thing going. That means that I talk about it, but I ain't really doing it, being about it. I talk about this thing, but I'm really not there. I'm not changing with this thing. And this is what I want us, the believers, to come to, to this point where we begin to do what's necessary to make eternal change. Because, watch this now, your destiny depends on you changing. See, everybody wants God to get them ready for their destiny, and God is trying to get you ready. The Holy Spirit will walk you through it, but you've got to be do walking. That means moving. Moving with God, not just standing still talking about, well, when is God coming? No, God already came. And he's waiting for you to move with him. And then what happens, people leave us, leave us behind, and then we get upset with God or we envious of somebody because God began to do things in their life and we see change, because, but they made a change to get there. Nobody, it, it, how many millionaires in this room right now? I'm talking about not, not faith, not talking about faith. I'm talking about right now, actually a millionaire. You know why? Because we ain't ready. Not that you can't be ready to be a millionaire, is it, but are you willing to change for the millionaire mentality? Ain't nobody talking now. See, everybody wants a million dollars, but nobody wants to do what it takes to get it. It takes change. Verse 1. This know also that in the last days there's perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of them own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Now notice this. Now, they, they, now throughout the age of time, even though we advanced in all of this intellectual technology, all this technology, we still find this at the core of man. We still find men hating men and killing men and evil, evil things and things are being perpetuated. They find better ways to do it. But yet with all of this advancement in knowledge, that's why he made this, this statement. Verse 3, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Here's what we're talking about. Watch it now. Having a form of godliness, meaning, oh, yeah, I believe in God, but yet I don't do nothing. I don't live that way. Watch this. It says, and denying the power thereof. What does that mean? I denied the right to change me. See, I, I denied the right to, to make me like I see that this is. No, 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 no. I like, you know, no, no it's okay. I love God because, you know, once saved, always saved. Uh, yeah, don't go home with that. Once saved ain't always saved. <laughs> once saved ain't always saved because Jesus talked about that. It ain't always where you, once you get saved. No, a man can lose his salvation. Here we go. But it says, but denying the power thereof from such turn away... See, here's another problem we have with the church. We, we always want to talk about how good our friends is in the world. The Bible sit here and said, now, according to your own thinking, he says, turn away from these type of people. If you turn away from somebody, how can you be with them? No, that's a good question because, see, we always make these excuses. We're not talking about going to work. We're not talking about when you go to a store, you have to deal with certain people. That's their life. But we're talking about having them in your house, in your life. 
He said, from such, turn away from these type of people. He, because he, he going down, verse 6, he says, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lust. See, notice, he said, those people can also help turn you back where you should be coming from. This is why he said in verse 7, ever learning but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. The first thing that must happen with anybody, there, I, I have five different ways I talk about it. There must be an encounter. There must be a clashing of what one person really believes till it does a, a, a clashing of truth. Because, you, and I'm going to show you in different instances throughout the Bible, different people, there was a different type of thing that happened because there was a come a clashing. Because without that, why would you know you're wrong? Without it, without this, this, this clashing of, of, of this, 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 what you're living or what, the way you're living in the world and truth, how do you know that you're wrong? Jesus said, I came not to get along with everybody. <laughs> he said, I came to sever, to make a difference between what you're saying and what I say. And see, what we have now, we still, now we have this coming back of blending of church and the world, and then we want to use each other, watch this now, to get where we're going when they ain't got nothing that I want. And if, and if it's the right way to go, I don't need them to go get it. I need God to show me how to go get there. And see, that's the problem because we have, we have not come to this point where we have allowed truth the right. Now, here, there's a difference between believers and non-believers. Believers deny God the right to help them change, the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, he said the Holy Spirit, it says, it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Then it says, also said, quench not the Holy Spirit. It also says, beware of what you say because when you say things that are not right, you tie the hands of the angel. That they are unable to perform the will of God in and for your life. See, believers have the right to deny. A lot of times, the world, they don't really know that they're wrong. Now, I, I had the privilege of, of being raised up in a household, you know, where my mama told us right from wrong. But that didn't stop me from, you know, I, I still was young. And it didn't stop me from trying to enjoy the, the wilds of the world. But see, I had to, see, that was me made a choice to go there. But see, people in the world, sometimes they don't even know. Had a conversation uh, years ago with this young man, you know what I'm saying, on, he was from France. And, uh, you know, Facebook, you know, Facebook connect you to the world. And uh, so anyway, you know, I, I was, you know, you know, I post pictures, you know, everybody, you know, typically I post pictures, new pictures, whatever, some think I'm cool or, you know, a little outfit or something. And the guy always made remarks. He always was saying, man, you're looking good. You know, at first I was kind of like, what's going on? <laughs> They're a little bit free over there in those nations, you know what I'm saying, to say to the man, you know, because I ain't about to tell the dude, yeah, you look good. I tell my son, you know, so, but I tell him, how do you look? You look all right. So anyway, he kept going on, and then we got into this conversation because he was saying, well, I know, I know that you have, a, I know you be having a lot of women. That's what he said to me. I know you get a lot of women. You do so, so. I said, no, I don't live like that. I said, that's not, that's, that's not my desire. He said, well, how do you do? And then he asked me, did I do such and such for myself? I said, no, I don't do such and such for myself. You know, and those of you grown, you know how to figure it out. And so, but I went and explained to him that I didn't live that way because I didn't desire to live that way because he said, well, how do you do it? And I got to tell him about Jesus because that's how my strength came from Jesus, not to be that way anymore. Not to be drawn or driven by my own lust of my flesh because I, I allowed, I watch this now, I did deny God the right to change me in that area. See, this is, see, but in the world, he thought it was okay. He thought it was okay to go and do those things. See, but there has to be, to, in order for a person to change, the first thing, there must be this encounter or this clashing of truth with where a person thinks they believe. Because without the truth of God, there is no true change. The Bible says thy word is true. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So how can you make real change without Jesus? You can't. 
And see, so this is what we, we, there has to be this clashing of, 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 of this, this, this truth against truth. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Or just write it down. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Just going to read one scripture. Although I may read all four of them. Verse 4 says, who will have all men to be saved, now watch this now, and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now watch this now. If he said he would have all men be saved, now what's the first thing we do when we, we say we want to receive salvation? What do we do? We do what? Repent. What do repent mean? Turn around. Turn around. Now I mean, 180, you go the other way. Okay, is that not change? In order for, for us to be able to, to walk in this change, watch this now, I got to stop and walk in my own way. I have to, see, repent means I have acknowledged that, I, I'm, I, that something ain't right with what I'm doing. Something is wrong, and now I acknowledge that Jesus is right. Therefore, I repent and receive him, and I turn. He said that he wished that all men be saved, and watch this, and come unto the knowledge of the truth. So you get saved, but you still got to keep, watch this, Come. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody with me now. He said, and then he said, and to come. See, even though you get saved, you still got to keep coming. See, most people get saved and stop right here. Well, Jesus coming one day, when Jesus come, you know, he on the sweet by and by. You know, when, when, my, when the chariots come. I ain't seen but one chariot come. That was pick up Elijah. Now, I do ask God to send me. I said, now, God, now, it would be cool if you just come pick me up. So I started trying to think about how I want God to come pick me up. You know, like swoop me down. You know, like Enoch was and he was not. You know what I'm saying? Jesus left on the cloud. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how I want to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, did you see him? He just left. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like waving to everybody like this, you know. <laughs> But read verse, verse 1. The reason I want to read this is because, see, this is where when we're going to witness and minister to people, this is where we should start. It's in verse 1. It says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Amen. See, what, what we're trying to do is, is, is get somebody to turn around when God ain't told us to go, go, go have the encounter. Some of you may be agents of encounter for God, but, that's what, but it has to be when he says, not when you decide. See, a lot of times I tell people, I, I, I tell you, when I go to over in Africa, when I'm talking to young men and young preachers or, or if I'm helping a young pastor of a church, the first thing I tell them, look, man, the first thing you need to learn to do is how to hear God's voice. You need to learn how to hear his voice and, and, and follow him. Stop trying to come up with your own ideas in your own head. Look, he said those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. So God, and then it says the whole earth is waiting on the sons and the daughters of God, not waiting on people that run around. And see, what happens is when you don't allow God to lead you to someone, you end up turning them off. Now watch this now. You either turn them off, and, and sometimes people, well, I didn't turn them off. You know, they, they, they let me pray for them. Here's what happens. How many people know if you take too much antibiotics on a regular basis, what do you do to your system? You call it to become immune. To, to, to it so it don't take out the bacteria. And what we do as Christians run around here talking about we with somebody, we making them immune. See, they don't, they, don't, they don't say nothing to you, but they get more resistant internally. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like them knocking on my door. And I'm a preacher. Look, stop bothering me on my day off. Because, see, first of all, if God told you, you would know that I was a preacher and I didn't need saving. Oh, yeah, anybody going to go that deep? See, that, I'm just saying, let's keep it simple. He said that, he said, pray for all men. He said, for kings and an authority for all, he said, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in our godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. We should be praying for people. We should be praying that, they are, that, 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 that whatever God needs to do, that he begin to pray for them, that the will of God be known, so God begin to break down those walls. God begin to prepare them for this encounter. Amen. Amen. See, as you, see, when you pray for people, you're preparing people. 
You say, well, what, 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 what do I pray? Well, then if you, can't, if you don't have your, you know, heavenly language, when you pray in English, then find a scripture in the Word. Say, now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray your will over, over whoever you're talking about, over Johnny. Father, I pray that he comes to know you in, the, in your power and in your might, that he may know what is the true riches. See, that he may know the true riches, that he comes into full knowledge of who you are and that he receives you and that your destiny for his life will come to pass. See, that, but if you're filled with the Spirit, you just pray in tongues. Just pray in the Spirit. Father, I pray for Johnny. Holy Spirit, pray through me the perfect will for Johnny's life and begin to pray. See, this is what needs to happen because without this encounter, now watch this now, how do they know they're walking in darkness? He said he sent John the Baptist. He said he sent John the Baptist. Now watch this now. He sent John the Baptist to, just to begin to preach repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Why? He said he won't let them know that they ain't right. And he's coming to save them. There has to be this connection. Turn to John chapter 3. I'll write it down. John chapter 3. Most of you know where it is. You know, you're here on Wednesday. I know you, you Bible scholars. I mean, you study the word. You want the word. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, and no man can do these miracles that thou dost except God be with him. Now, the reason I wanted to read that to you because, see, now he had a different type of encounter because he found out he'd been doing these things all of his life and wasn't seeing no results. Then he's like, something ain't right. This guy shows up, and he's doing all of these miracles, and, he, and people being healed, blind eyes are being opened. Deaf, deaf I, I, de, uh, I mean, uh, de, uh, ears that can't hear about open, mouths that couldn't speak can speak. He said something is different than what I was being told. Amen. So you have that too when people, there's, a, there's a, a failure of what they're walking in. See, when there's a failure of what people are walking in, then they begin to look for something different. Like what is going on? This, this ain't right. Uh, you know, uh, I must not be doing it right uh, you know, this, this ain't happening. That's why a lot of people don't want to get married now. No, come on now. We're going to tell the truth. Let's tell the truth. A lot of people that have mar ma bad marriages don't want to get married, and they always in they watch it. Now, I was at, when I first got to Tyler, let me be quiet, because I'm, you know, single. My wife passed away 16 years ago. Matter of fact, July 2nd be 16 years. My wife been gone. You see, uh, you know, now everybody talking about, oh, you're something, something, something. Look, she's having more better time than I am. She up in heaven hanging out with Jesus 16 years. Don't, I ain't getting no older, you know. And I'm sitting out here like, Lord, then I should ask her for a replacement. <laughs> Where's my replacement? Now, you know, now, now, now see, this is the difference in generations. Let me say this now. Now, back in the day, in generations that beyond me, now, when they had wild, you know, friends, they had friends, you know, like older couples with friends. And they would, you know, some of them say this, you know, now, if I die, you know, the wife would say that, the wife, you know, you know, if I die, you know, and, and before you die and your husband die, I want you to marry my husband. They'll say that now. You know I'm telling the truth. You know why? Because they want somebody to comfort them. They're not afraid because they're going to get another love. They want them comforted while they're gone. But my reason, you know, for, for talking about this, <laughs> I was, you know, telling a young man when I got to town, this, this, you know, he, young man, he's an older guy, been married so many years. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm, you, know well, you got a girlfriend? You know, here to go. You got a girlfriend? Nope. I ain't got no girlfriend. I don't want no girlfriend. I want a wife. Uh, well, you know, you know, I'm going to tell you. Now, he's been married some years. I'm going to tell you right now, don't even get married. Just find you a good woman. Go on over there and, and do what you're going to do and come back home. <laughs> now, he was a deacon in the church. I ain't called it no name. But my point for saying it is because his marriage wasn't good, so he was in, in telling me not to do it. See, and that's what happens when, when people come to a place where what they're doing, what they really believed in, it begins to fail and not have re yield results. They start looking for something else. That's why Nicodemus. See, you have those people that, that, that are looking. That's why you let God lead you because God knows what state every person is in. 
There has to be this, 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 this coming across truth, an encounter with truth, a clashing with truth. Because without it, people are not going to make change. They're not going to make change. And, 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 you know, you can say all you want to. They can see all the commercials they want to on TV. That ain't going to make nothing happen. Here's a point I want to plug in with believers. See, a lot of times, it ain't the issue that, that, that people questioning your God. They're questioning your results. You don't have results. That's why they question your God. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have problems ministering to people that I've prayed for and God answered their prayer. See, the problem comes in when you say you live a certain way, but you have no results. And then they question your God because there's no results. Well, then why would I want to be that if you got to live like this? Well, why I, want to, why I want to give my life over to him if nothing's happening for you, then what is he going to do for me? I get calls all the time for me to pray for people. You know why? Because when there was no rain, I prayed there was rain. When I prayed for a baby to be healed and not die, the baby was healed. See, so I don't have no problem. They don't be questioning me. Now, you sure you know God? No, they don't question me. They say that, look, they call me every time they have problems. And see, the issue is, is when you come to the point that there is no result in what you say you believe, it makes you question what you believe. That's why Nicodemus came to Jesus, but he came by night. And Jesus answered him and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And see, he said, except a man turn around and be born from the Spirit, he said, you can't, you can't have the change that you're looking for. And see, too many believers are trying to have this godly result without a godly change. And, and it requires you, 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 you got to deal with this clashing of what you say you believe, because all believers don't believe the same way. Did you know that? Now, don't get me wrong. We're still brothers and sisters. If you believe Jesus Christ is Lord, then we're still sisters and brothers. But all believers don't believe after that a little bit. And see that's, that's, that cause, see, that's why you have these different outcomes and these different views and these different words and these different churches because we can't believe the same thing because we ain't all been truly changed in every way. Turn to, turn to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, verse 54. For the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and read. I didn't give the scriptures like I should have. Uh, when they heard these things, they were cut to their heart. Let me go back up a couple, a couple of verses. Verse 51. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in your heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they slain them, which was showed before of the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Now, this is Stephen, Stephen talking over in Acts. And the reason I said, because there's time that people must be confronted. But you need to know that God is sending you to do the confronting. See, because, see, he was dealing with leaders and, and those that, that had been given the right to, to lead people and direct people. He began, by the Holy Spirit, began to minister and say. Now watch this now. Verse 54. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice. But guess who was standing there? Watching him. Saul as a young man. And see, the reason I want you to know this is because there's times that there must be this clash. This must be the confrontation by God, by the Spirit of God to people to let them know that you're not going the right way. And see, a lot of times we get lulled into, and let me say this, because we'll do it to ourselves. And this happens a lot of times to, to preachers when God is using them outside, and sometimes they have this problem that they need to deal with, but because nobody knows it, they say it's okay, and they keep doing it. 
Now, y'all don't seen preachers on TV get exposed. Now, somebody like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. See, and, and see, but then now watch it. Now, the Holy Spirit comes along and he says, hey, this is not right. You know, we need to deal with it. Don't allow the Holy Spirit to fall on deaf ears, what he speaks on deaf ears in your spirit. Just because you have received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, we still all have changes that need to be made. But watch this now. He has to confront certain things. Certain things he has to, to show you that it's not working for you. Without a, 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 a knowing something is wrong, then how do you know it's not right? Now, I was taught, like I told you, when I went back in the world, I was taught what I should be doing. But I made a choice to do something wrong because, you know, I, you know, thank God it's over. But here, now turn, to, since we're there, look at, uh, let me see. Verse 58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their cloak, clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. See, that, 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 see, we don't know what God, how God plants seed in people. Saul heard it. He saw their response. But a seed still was sown. Now turn to Acts chapter 9. Verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired a letter, letters to Damascus to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, what way? Walking in God Jesus' way. Whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. See, this is why we should be praying for people. We don't know how or what's required for them to have an encounter. And if we're trying to decide if we're going to be the one or if we're going to do it, no, no, no. Just pray. Find somebody and pray for them. You know, we talk about people in the world, but are we praying for people in the world? I ain't get very many mm -hmm. See, see we, 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 what are we doing to help this, this change come about? But also, what are we doing so change can come about in our life? Can I tell you something? If you're not willing to pray for somebody, that means that you haven't changed either. Because Jesus' heart was to pray. Jesus' heart was to seek and save that which was lost. You might not always get to minister to somebody directly, but you can always pray for somebody directly. And see, then, if you're not willing or to say, well, I don't know what to pray, how to pray, that means there's an area that you need to acknowledge the will of God in this area and find truth about it and get to doing it, make the change. See, this is not just about one change from getting saved. To this. this is about changing your entire life. We're going to get to the point. I'm talking about changing your entire life. And see, every part of your life has to have an encounter with truth. If you're, because see, people think they can still do what they want to their money. You know, I remember one time they said, as long as I got checks, I can write. <laughs> we know that's not true. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to, <laughs> I know this young lady ain't going to put her on blast. But anyway, there's one young lady said she got a car. She said, as long as she slide her car, she don't need check to see how much money she got. She just slide it. If it works, she's like, thank God. <laughs> that's not the way it's supposed to be you understand what I'm saying I'm talking about making godly change in the area of our life because Jesus did say in 1010 the thief coming out but to steal kill and destroy but I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly here's the thing are you ready for abundant life uh, I have the question that means you have to change to be ready for it that's good that your, your heart is there, but now you have to begin to do, make, and watch this now. Spiritual change also leads to natural change. Amen. Spiritual change, true spiritual change, you have to feed the spirit, man, and you have to get truth in the spirit, man, but it leads to natural change. So the first thing is they have to, he had an encounter with God. After you, a person has an encounter, 
they have to make a decision. You go to Hebrews chapter 12, and it talks about Moses that he chose. See, when Moses was, he, he was raised up in Pharaoh's house, educated in Pharaoh's house. Actually, Pharaoh's daughter took him and said, it's my child. And then he, he said, he, he, he was, but his mother, watch this, now God is so cool. That's why I say you get with him. You see, if we stop trying to figure out our own way, we'll see how cool God really is. Now, they was told to kill, kill, kill children at the time because it was said, kill all male children. But this Hebrew woman said, no, 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 I ain't killing my child. I mean, right, I ain't supposed to be killing my child. I ain't going to kill my son. They told the midwives to kill off the boys. Y'all to catch that. Some of y'all to catch that when they said kill off the boys. Kill off the men. There's a reason they want the men killed off in society. There's a reason that they want men to be wayward and all that stuff. Why? Because they leave the society vulnerable. But anyway, let's go ahead. But they was also saying a deliverer was coming. But here it is. She refused to do it. She was hiding him as long as she could. She said, that baby getting too big now. <laughs> See, he getting too big now. This baby growing. He's supernaturally growing. I'm feeding him. He getting bigger. I can't hardly hide him. He talking louder. Now, don't get me wrong. That's sometimes you get a little fear in that. She was scared. She said, well, go put him in the water. Hide him under them bull rushes. He, he'll be all right. But he got to crying. And then Pharaoh's daughter came to, to, to clean herself up. The little sister was watching over her brother. Just like angels watch over you. Just like angels watch over you. When you when you are following the will of God, angels are watching over you. And this is not, I'm just not saying anything. I'm telling you what's happening. A lot of people see the problem is we, we begin to, to get into self-help. No, get away from self-help. Stay with God and his word. Trust it until, trust it. If, it, if, if my life is lost for trusting God, it's lost. But I tell you this, you ain't going to lose your life when you're doing the things of God and God is after you. So God, the girl was watching over him. And then all of a sudden she said, the girl said, oh, I know. She said, well, go find me. Now watch this. Pharaoh's daughter said, well, I, I, he's my child, but go find me somebody to raise him for me. God, Pharaoh's daughter paid the mama to raise her own son. Tell me God ain't, ain't cool. But after he got to a certain age, he moved to Pharaoh's house, was educated in his Pharaoh's house. But do you know the whole time that his mother was raising him, she was telling him of his, his life and what God has called him to do. What God has told him that he was the one that God, God called to be the deliverer of the people and bring them out of bondage. She was telling him all his life while she was raising him. And then a time came that it rose up inside of him when he saw the, uh, an Egyptian dealing with a, a Hebrew, an Israelite. He rose up to say, well, that's what God called me to do. Let me go do something. Now, he did it the wrong way. But notice, he still did it. But it said when it came down to this question, this decision he had to make, will I be who God called me to be, a Hebrew or Israelite, or will I be Pharaoh's daughter's son? In Hebrews chapter 12, you'll find out he said, I refuse. He said, I'd rather suffer a little while with my people than to be in the king's daughter's, be called the son of the king's daughter. And see, when you have a clashing or, or, or a, a, a coming together, that has to be a decision that I'm going to make the change. And Moses made that, made that decision that he was no longer going to be, he said, I'd rather be over here where God called me and safe. He said, I may suffer for a season or, 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 or here. He said, but I will be okay when it's all over. When a person has a true encounter with God and true encounter with truth, they, they have a decision to make. That's why you don't want to, I don't want people, you know, I, look, I, I, I applaud your effort and your willingness to go witness, but this is why I don't want you to go do it unless God leads you because you never know when the person is really ready. Allow God to, to make the encounter call. Allow God to make the, 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 the clash of truth to come to them. Allow God to determine it, and then you just be ready. In the meantime, you just pray. I can tell you this, those that don't pray ain't going nowhere. God can't dispatch you because he ain't got your heart. See, you want to get God's heart, you got to start praying for people like God, care about people. And if you don't care enough to pray about me, you really don't care about me. 
Because I don't need you smiling in my face. I need you in his face for me. But they have to make a decision. They must have an encounter with God. And sometimes there has to be a failure of things that they have believed in. There's a failure or a crashing or a no result given to what they're doing. And then God sends in a word to them. And then they have a decision to make. The same thing goes for every believer. Even though you have received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, every area of your life, you still need to choose God's way. How you handle your money. How you raise your children. How, to, how, 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 how you decide, let's see, you know, how you decide what you're going to do, vote, not vote, what, vote who, vote that, whatever you do, it's still so to be according to truth. But you have to make changes based on him, not based on them, the, the, those that are the crowd and all of those that are saying this. No, 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 no. Go hear God for yourself. That's one thing I encourage people to do. If you need to have a personal relationship with God, and when I say personal relationship, that means you need, to, you need to be able to hear him and you need to be able to reach him. And sometimes you got to do some time to work it out in prayer and consistency. Because if I don't know what your voice sounds like, how can I respond when you call me? And so many people are being lost for no reason, missing this and missing that, because they don't know his voice. And it all comes down to you practicing, practicing, meaning getting before him on a regular basis. When you encounter, when you read the word and it encounters or it challenges something that you're doing, you need to make a decision right then to follow truth. Because when you don't follow truth right then, it gets a little harder the next time. It gets a little harder the next time. And God wants us to change because he has something that he wants us to do, but yet he still wants us to fulfill the destiny that he has for our life. Now watch this. God has great things in store for everybody. God ain't never called the people to suffer for all their life. But it requires you to change and be ready for change. Be ready to receive. You have to go meet your destiny. Your destiny don't come to you. Did you hear me? And then there is no accidental meetings with God. God knows when you're going to show up. And he's going to meet you at the point of your need. God is always aware when things are going on. So it ain't no accident. It ain't no luck that you ran into somebody. It, it, it was God designed it to happen when good things happen to you. All right, stand to your feet. If you need prayer for a specific reason, you know, I want to pray with you about it. And uh, if you have need healing in your body, I want to pray with you about that as well. Say this with me, and I'm going to let you go. Say, change, change. is good. If truth is the source. So I follow truth. And truth only. God bless you. I love every last one of you.